Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Hey guys, this is Chael Sonnen. Make sure you check out my podcast, You're Welcome. We talk about MMA, we talk about professional wrestling, politics, anything you need to know about today's top issues so that you can sound intelligent and you get them all from me, your humble host, America's favorite gangster. Make sure you check me out. You're Welcome with Chael Sonnen. New episodes every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at Podcast One app, Apple Podcasts, and of course, PodcastOne.com. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get on. Mandate, get on. And welcome to CarCast. I'm Adam Carolla. That's the moderator. Hello. Yeah, Matt DeAndrea over there, yeah. man. Exciting times. Dan Greenewalt's coming in from Forza 7 already. Can you believe it? Forza Motorsports 7. I just found out it takes a lot of guys to make this game. Like 500. I always say it. And, you know, and all the things that go with it. Like all the, the other packs and the car packs and everything else that go... With this game, they're just better than they need to be. That's all. That's all I'm going to tell you. So, um, and also with the rollout, they also rolled out a Porsche this year, right? Yes. Yeah. They'll talk about it. This is a big thing because Porsche brought a car out and basically debuted it at their event as opposed to a car event, like a an they, auto they, show. They, they yeah. debuted it at a Forza event. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of days ago. So it's like officially, like this this virtual world has officially like crossed over. Yeah, right. Like you're you're for you know, these guys because they make right. they make the the best car game well, ever. Yeah. So in the past, you the, they'd put a parachute over the car, they'd put a couple of hot chicks next to it, and they'd pull the parachute off. Yeah, and then and, the, and that, then you'd say, "Oh, I saw that car last month at the auto show." Right, and right? then <laughs> and then they. But and then they and then they then that gave way or no even if they un, no what I'm saying is even if they unveil it at the auto show they back in the '60s they'd put like a parachute over yeah, it then yeah. then the dry ice and the smoke came in dried and smoke and the car would drive yeah out on a thing but now it's all it's virtual yeah can we and do so, it can we should we say the name of the car yeah okay yeah Let's it's say the it. uh, it's the Porsche it's the uh, 2018 911 GT2 RS yeah. To E3? So, no, that's the event it was at, E3. Oh, to yeah, E3. They brought it. they brought it to E3. So the, but the, uh, the oh, GT2, it. Sorry, it that. Yeah. Porsche hasn't done a GT2 in something like seven years, so. <laughs> this is why everyone is kind of secretly dumb, and I'm secretly dumb, too, because it says 911 GT2 RS and then TO E3. Yeah. And I'm like, is this some electric model <laughs> or something? <laughs> E3 is the trade show that's right, got the video right. game. This is how trade planes trade. crash. Because it's like this, nobody is wrong here, but we're still smoking on the side of the mountain. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Everyone is right, except for when I'm reading it, it seems like, well, this is a very elaborate Porsche. The GT2 RS. Now, yeah. they did the GT2 and the GT3, right? And didn't they go in y- the GT4? Yes, in like, years past, but not consistently. But they got past the two into the three, right? Well, okay, so the difference between a two and a three is one's technically like turbo, one's naturally aspirated. Oh, so the but, twos are always naturally aspirated. Yeah, you'd and then think the RS. So. You'd think so, but no, they always do it backwards. So, so, so the threes are turbo. Right, right, and the twos are naturally aspirated. The, wait, the other way around. The twos are turbo. Oh, yeah. the three. <laughs> so this is a turbo car. So the two is faster than the three. That's a turbo car. Yeah. Okay. Let's see a picture of it. Sorry, yeah. we had a we had a picture yeah. of it. I don't, it. I don't. I don't remember what the horsepower is on this thing, but something like yeah, six forty or something. I don't even know if they have announced what the horsepower is going to be. But you know, Porsche just keeps going, and Porsche is sort of going to be like Ferrari, or probably is like Ferrari, and that. There's a line to get the one-off, and I mean one-off, small batch stuff that's really cool. Oh, yeah. And, and we know we know this already. Like when the 911R came out like this past year, I mean, if you weren't on the list to get it, you know, dealers that were allocated for them and they didn't have a buyer, they were getting like twice the, the amount of money. The car is 200 grand and they're asking for 400, you know, dealer, uh, dealer markup. <clears throat> 
unbelievable. Which Ferrari doesn't, uh, Ferrari, uh, Porsche doesn't love that idea. Mm -hmm. They don't love that idea. And uh, they said that, uh, like, if you're buying one of these cars and you're on the list. 700 horsepower out of a 3.8. That's nice. Sorry, go ahead. If you're if you're on the list for, like, this new GT2 or mm-hmm. the 911R mm-hmm. and you buy it and then three months later you, you go to sell it or you take it for auction or you put it online, mm-hmm. uh, Porsche is saying that um, although, although we can't prevent you from doing that, you will not be on the list again. We, mm-hmm. we keep a very close eye now mm-hmm. of... Of everybody that buys our specialty cars. You know, look, I, I like it, and I, I get it, and they have a brand to protect, and I enjoy it. All right, uh, let's see. So we sold my car, uh, the Fitzy car, on Bring a Trailer, which was... Um, it was it, exciting? It was exciting. <laughs> I have a very weird wiring, <laughs> but I was very excited about it. Yeah. And it wasn't the monetary amount. Although I was I was very happy with the uh, one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars the car sold for, uh, it was exhilarating to watch it keep getting extended and blah blah blah. Yeah, and it, you know, again, it's like it's it's one of those things where um, it's not the money. The money is for me. I mean, for what I what my obligations are and uh, things of that nature. It's not it, – it's it, look, every every penny helps, but it's way more ego and adrenaline and fun than it is money. Now, if yeah. I was selling my second pickup truck in 1989, then it's all about all the about money. money. <laughs> At this point, it was just yeah. fun. And uh, – and it was it was really fun to watch that car. And also, I have a lot of love for that car. And of and of course, uh, Fitzy. It was and, nice to see Fitzy and that car start to get some attention. Yeah, and I think uh, for that for that matter, we've been talking about it a lot that the uh, the vintage race car world is uh, probably a hot hot world now in the in the in terms of collector. Um, when, when people talked about collector cars in the past, race cars weren't part of the conversation. Yeah. Um, unless they were like the, you know, obviously Ferrari GTO or something like that. But those were like street going race cars. Like there was a crossover with the Ferrari 550, of course, James Dean famously, and th- and some of the Jags and stuff. Where the guys yeah. would like drive them to the track and then go race Sebring for 12 hours and then hopefully drive them home, you yeah. know. So you can say, well, those were race cars, but they were street legal ish. They just had some racing history, not not full on dedicated but, 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 race what, car. I, but. What I mean is history aside, when we started collecting cars with any real sort of sincerity. It was pretty much street cars and then race cars that were also street cars, regardless of history. They weren't full blown, sure. you know, slicks and fiberglass everywhere and roll cages and that that stuff was like those were just old race cars. And then those cars would be worth something, but the amount they'd be worth is about the amount that could be parted out for. Yeah. So it was sort of like, you know, if you wanted to get a full built, full built race Datsun 510 or even Z car, might be anywhere between low end on the 510. I mean, I'm so I'm not talking about a nicely built car that wasn't you know complete clunker and didn't need to be torn apart, but the lower end was about 12 grand, and the higher end on a 510 was. 2830 but okay. for a really nice car but that 2831 would have needed to have some history like we would have needed to know the name of the guy drove that yeah. drove the runoffs or whatever and the Z cars were the same like they were like 15 to 30 but now there's a value that's being added onto these cars that's not simply the fact that somebody stitch welded every seam and put on camber plates it's actually history drivers events yeah and even though the stuff's from the 70s and even though everyone who, dro- who drove it or many of the people are still alive and all this kinds of or, or or even though they're japanese the market is starting to wake up 
Yeah, and we're starting to see that because, like, I mean, to your point, when you started buying some of the race cars that you have, uh, you were buying a, a lot less of the history. You personally were buying the history, but somebody was selling you the car. And with that car came with a lot of other stuff, cylinder heads and things like that. Because, you know, somebody's over there going, hey, if we're going to sell this, we got to sell all this crap that right. goes with it because we right. need to clean out the shop. Right. right. You weren't going to the auctions and buying these cars up on a podium under the lights. And, oh, no. And now we're starting to see these cars show up on the podium under the lights, you know, because yeah. they are significant and they do have history to them. So, you know, certainly the last, I don't know, roughly eight years that we've been uh, uh, working together, the collection that you have and what we've seen in the race car world and a little bit in the Japanese car world as a whole has, right. has gone up. And it's nice to see that some of the race cars are getting the respect that they deserve, especially the ones with really significant race history. The Jim Fitzgerald car is a cool car. That guy's got 350 plus career wins. He's a he was a he was a good guy. You know, like Tommy Kendall even chimed in at one point on uh, during the Bring a Trailer auction, and he commented, he said, "Fitzy is the guy that taught me how to drive." Right. He was, he was basically, you know, my my his mentor. Yeah, his you know, and and instructor. Tom Cruise. Yeah, <laughs> taught Tom Cruise how to drive. You know, so. Uh, you know, again, like like you're saying, 155 thousand dollars sure is a lot of money, but in the world of you know the you know Lamborghinis you have in the other room that are two million dollars, it's not a ton of money. But it was nice to see that kind of money and excitement be generated for that car. We got like thousands of views. There was something like 190 comments in the last like 30 minutes or a couple hours or whatever of that of that auction which was insane so many people but and thanks to everybody that that jumped in there and commented and chatted and it was bid fun. and yeah it was fun to watch hey uh chris why don't you go get dan and i'll tell you guys about ams oil ams oil move beyond stock performance ams oil synthetic full synthetic motor oil combines top tier synthetic technology with unique additives to protect up to 25,000 miles or uh, one year in between oil changes. Shields engine from wear and deposits, wear on pistons and cam leads to loss of power. So let's not, let's not grind on them pistons and them cams. 75% more engine protection against horsepower loss and wear than required by industry standard. Piston cleanliness, 93% above the industry standard. Let's go, man. Test in the field and on the track in extreme conditions. Just check it out. We love this stuff. AMS Oil, A M S Oil dot com slash carcast. Get more information there. AMS Oil, devoted to protection. Good to see you, Dan. Hello, Adam. Hi, Matt. How you doing? How's it going? It's going well. It's been a long week, but it's been a great week talking to fans. Yeah. When did E3 officially start? Not the E3 that Adam thinks is E3, the real E3, uh, <laughs> the event. It started... Like months ago, in some ways, because we have to do all the planning and rehearsal and building builds and what yeah. have you. But I actually flew into town Thursday night, so a week ago. Okay. And, and then you uh, guys do your events prior to the actual convention center L.A. Convention Center opening. Right. We do a, a stage briefing. So it's like a press conference. Yeah. It's about 90 minutes long. And doing all of the rehearsal for that, it's uh, 10,000 people or so in person and 10 million watching online. So that briefing is uh, heavily managed. <laughs> I do a lot of speaking or, you know, to, to as a spokesperson for this game. But the three minutes that I'm on stage during that 90-minute presentation has more people managing my words than you can imagine. I mean, every, yeah. <laughs> every little thing is written. Forza Motorsports 7, by the way. It's available for pre-order now on Amazon. You may want to uh, bookmark us and go through our site. Uh, what is our site? Carcastshow.com. Yeah, yeah. Carcast <laughs> Bookmark us and uh, show a little love and pre-order it uh, on Amazon. It'll be available September 28th. So, uh, Dan, we love talking to you about all the incredible lengths you guys go to for accuracy and uh, authenticity. Uh, tell us a good story about uh, accuracy and authenticity. And, uh, oh, we talked about you walking the tracks and g have the tires change, when the temperatures change, and just every every little thing you wouldn't even yeah. think of. You know, and actually, 
Dan and I were talking the other day. I went down to one of his events and uh, over at uh, you know downtown LA, and uh, we're looking at the game and and what you guys were going on. And there's giant posters hanging off the ceiling mm-hmm. of the game. You know, it looks like box art or something or ads of the game. And I'm like, hey, is that a screenshot from the game? And you were saying the no. Because the screenshots of the game look too good, and you'll just think it's a photo. So yep. some ad agency gets a hold of it, and they actually have to kind of, for lack of a better term, sort of dumb it down a little bit to make it look like a video game. Because now the video game looks better. And, and that's how things have gotten to at this <laughs> point. That, that actually when you make a commercial, if you make a commercial with me using nothing but in-game assets, people actually think it's just a car commercial. Yeah. So we have to put in a lot of cars and cut up the action a lot so that they at least think, okay, it's not a single car commercial. But even so, we need to be more artistic with our visual ID, so the box art and the like. Because, yeah, people look at it and go, well, that, you just took a picture of a car. Yeah. Um, How big a... When when you see we're watching it now. Watching a trailer pretty, here. pretty cool. Got a E36 uh, M3 there. Mm-hmm. All, the, all the familiar stuff. With a white body kit. How, uh, how different... Uh, driving the Paris Dakar truck now. It's a lot of uh, Le Mans like cars trucks. going through the desert. <laughs> what um, when you take a look at Forza One? Mm-hmm. What's it look like to you? Is it, is it dramatically different? Uh, do, do you are you like the you first go, episode oh, of The Simpsons? I'm they were ashamed kinda... <laughs> of what we did, or do you go, that's the best we could have possibly did with that. What year was that? That would have been 2005, I think. Is there if 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 we were to take a look at it, would be would it be insanely different, or would it just be? Well, I can tell the new one's a little better. It's insanely different, and here's you know, it's like the difference between. So you know, you see a Lego of a like a GT3 RS, right? You know that mm-hmm. Lego thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's bumpy and weird looking and doesn't look smooth, but you get the idea, and it's pretty. Right. And then there's like a Duplo version of that. Well. Forza Motorsport 1 kind of looks like the Duplo version. It just right. looks very <laughs> bumpy and rough. And, and in fact, it looks really almost overly colorful as well. We basically had a lot less pixels on the screen. You've got to think of the old TVs, right? The right. 4x3 cathode ray tube TV. That's what we were making the game for. So, you know. It like could, even if you could make it better, people couldn't see it better. Yeah. And and we didn't have the power. I mean, now, I mean, today's modern console is like a high-end gaming rig. The new Xbox One X that was announced at that briefing is like a high-end PC that you can bring into your living room. Powers a 4K TV, HDR, but also, even if you've got a normal 1080p TV, there's so much power there, we can just make every little pixel look insane. So we really suck people in. Is, um, so, uh, so then the, my follow-up was like, is it harder? Are there more hours into what you do now or into what you did then because the technology was so much weaker? You know, it, the teams get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we do more tooling. We do more automation that allows our teams to be even more efficient. But with that efficiency, we don't have less people. We have more. So the sun really never goes down on development in the Forza franchise. We've got uh, – Matt and I were talking about this earlier. There's about – 240, 250 people in our building working on the Forza franchise in various capacities. And that doesn't include include test or marketing. I mean, that's just workers. And then uh, in England, there are multiple teams we're working with, uh, including the playground team that make Forza Horizon. It's a wonderful Mm -hmm. game we shipped last year. And then we have teams in India and Vietnam. We have test teams in Eastern Europe. I mean, really all over the world, there are people working on Forza around the clock all year round. Incredible. Brian's got a question from uh, New York about the uh, NASCAR edition. Brian? Hi, how's it going? Hey, Dan. Um, huge fan of the series, by the way, and yours um, for years. I'm Thank really you very excited much. to play a, play a full motorsport game on the PC. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so in Forza Motorsport 6, I really like the NASCAR expansion you guys came out with um, later, um, I guess, in the year. Um, are there plans to include NASCAR style stock cars or some of those tracks um, in the new game? Yeah, so the great thing about that expansion and also the Porsche expansion before it is we got really deep into stories of motorsport. We had pro drivers telling these <clears throat> awesome stories about the cars. And our hope was to in, to get a new generation thinking about cars in this more expanded kind of uh, interactive way. Well, we integrated that idea into the whole career. So the new career mode has drivers throughout telling you stories about famous races and cars that they've raced in. It's it's really cool. But on top of that, yes, there are NASCAR cars and, of course, Porsche cars in the base game. What made that NASCAR expansion so cool, though, was that we were not trying to replicate 
NASCAR, we were giving you all these what ifs. You know, what if a NASCAR was going up against this car or that car? Or mm-hmm. what if it was on Le Mans? What if it was on Spa? What was on Bathurst? So those what if scenarios are, you know, integral to Forza, especially with 700 cars. The amount of what if scenarios we can create is really endless. How do you uh, legislate this part, which is, I was watching some uh, Le Mans cars going by, and I was watching basically the, the prototype stuff. The uh, I think uh, AOL well, Nissan, I, I, I guess Peugeot, everyone's doing a Audi, everyone's doing a crazy diesel yeah. something now. And so those things go down the Mulsanne straight, and they're, they're passing the GT class, the, the Corvettes, mm-hmm. the, the Porsches, the, um, the Ford GTs. Do you figure out the top speed or the average speed and then go, okay, here's what this car can do versus that car? Because you wouldn't want the guy in the 911 just to mash the pedal and pass the spaceship with, yeah. with Audi on the side of it, yeah. right? Well, so the the level of complexity that goes into the research for the physics is is well beyond what I think anyone could even imagine. We have a whole team doing research. But what we research is not things like horsepower and top speed. Those are the end result of mm-hmm. the physical components. So mm-hmm. top speed is going to be a result of, yes, the torque curve and driveline flex and Traction. tire friction and downforce, yeah. uh, as well as you know how the... Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of it's the aerodynamic nature of the car is what's going to dictate that top speed. So rather than actually plugging in top speed, the simulation just gives the correct top speed by doing it. Those LMP cars are crazy, though. I mean, that's like a, I think it's like a 900 horsepower, you know, hybrid yeah, between right. the, the petrol engine and the, the electric side. And then it's like I got a 210 mile per hour top speed down the muscle. What, what do you think they weigh? I think they're 900 kilos. I think that's actually part of the LMP so they're about 2,000 pounds or yeah, 20, yeah about, or and something. they're huge. They're really wide. We actually have a 919, the Porsche LMP car you saw at the end, at the show right now. Wow. And there have been cars at the show before, but I was amazed when we pulled the veil off of this one. Yeah. I, I didn't know how normal gamers would react to a 919 because yeah, it looks like a – I mean, where the hell is this thing from? It's right. like a spaceship. And, yeah, all of a sudden cameras come out. People yeah. are, like, Snapchatting and Instagram, you know, live well, there. Tell us about the part, the Porsche partnership. I mean, we, we touched on it a little bit because of the debut of the car, but this is a much bigger deal. Yeah, the debut, first off, was just amazing. I mean, I'm used to being upstaged by cars. I'm not Mr. Performer. You know, I'm there to <laughs> deliver a message. But, you know, this face is really not why people come there. They come to see the cars. And, yeah, unveiling this 911 GT2 RS on stage was an incredible moment for the games industry as well as the automotive industry. Yeah. So a car, you know, a supercar was debuted on an E3 stage in front of gamers. That is really unprecedented and it's because of the power of gaming we have 4.8 million players playing our game so the partnership is a six-year partnership with porsche and the goal of it is to create in-game experiences as well as in-person experiences for porsche fans and forza fans so that briefing was an in-person experience for the 10,000 people that were there to see a car unveiled for the first time and it surprised the hell out of everybody but this partnership will be beyond that. I mean, we're going to Le Mans. We're going to be crowning esports champions on the podium at Le Mans at, next to the other. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> esports is about as legit as it gets now. And uh, we've already had our drivers actually on the podium at Le Mans in the past because we, Forza drivers race at Le Mans as part of teams. I mean, they naturally right. get rides. But this is the first time that an esport is actually on the podium at Le Mans for digital driving. Not because your digital driving got you a ride with Rowdy right. or something. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> talked. Um, we're in the wrong we're, business. We, yeah, we, no, we're, uh, who are we talking to? Han? I'm trying to think. Uh, Joey Han? Joey Han. Yeah, Joey Han. We're talking to him. And he's like, yeah, we got to go. He's driving the Ford GT. Got to hang out. Got to got to sit in the simulator. Yeah. And I'm guessing that's Practicing. that's you guys. I mean, I don't I don't know what tra- what graphics they're looking at, but I'm guessing you guys created those graphics. Uh, well, why would you go somewhere else? There's a lot of bespoke simulators uh, that are used by different race teams, and we've worked with a lot of them. the The thing you get with a custom made simulator that's a full vertical stack is that you can have great simulation, but also you can directly drive the input of this wheel 
you know, integrate with this car. And you can really focus on these tires and these conditions and these tracks. What we build in Forza Motorsport is a enormous sandbox that's completely interchangeable and extensible. So we can do 1930s cars with wooden chassis that flex. We can do old tires, new tires. We can do all these different weather conditions changing dynamically and really do all that research. But it means we also support all of these different PC wheels. So when you talk to a driver that's doing simulation, often they, they actually will rebuild like a physical wheel. To, right. So you know, they the can rig drive. that they sit in to play the game, they can they can custom build that rig. And that's where most of their investment want. goes. So our investment mostly goes into the physics and the software, and their investment often goes very heavily into the haptics and the feeling of the driver. Very heavily. That's not cheap. It's not cheap, but actually, if you think about <laughs> you over say the haptics? last yeah haptics, I don't even know what that word is. Things Haptic, you feel. Hap- Things yeah. you feel. No. Yeah. When you, Tac- I thought I was done with tactile. When you, but we're haptic. When you now. log in your iPhone, you put your thumb on your fingerprint and it gives you that little pulse. Haptics. Uh-huh. That's haptics. I don't do that. <laughs> no. I don't have a yeah. code. <laughs> <laughs> I just turn my phone you on. Turn your phone on. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I don't. I've never. I, I don't know why. I don't have any of that. I should probably do that, right? Yeah. Well, Somebody's got a question. Hold there's on. There's a thing. It's a Mark, thing. I don't have any information. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's 46 from Colorado he says he used Forza to help him work on real cars. Tell us, Mark. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, first time, long time. Uh, hey, it, it's been a while. I used to I used to be quite a little car hobbyist. I would mm-hmm. buy, my, my budget was more like 1993 240SX. And right. really, I could afford, I could afford to import an engine. So, I, you know, I'd get in the real tiny aluminum turbocharged block from japan it's a good drifting then, car right yeah. so they all yeah, the yeah. beginning that's right. all they use to those for the platform why yeah. spend yeah. money on interior yeah <laughs> exactly spend it on tires and it had the four four wheel steer so you could do you know like oh, an eight foot oh that's probably why <laughs> yeah all right that was pretty neat how'd you use Forza? Uh, anyway so at the same time i had a 13 year old my son was about 13 you know and right in the preteen, early teen ages and I would go in and notice that the exact car I had in the garage was in the game. And mm. I, I purposely, you know, upgraded the car to the lighter engine, added a turbocharger, made the tires wider, narrower, tried to evaluate the performance of what I had in the garage. And oh, by total happenstance. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah. And, like, what would, a, what would a bigger turbo do for the car? Would it, you know, just break traction and go nuts, or would it actually be faster on the course? And I'd make... I'd, I'd do it in the game before I actually did it on the car. I love that story. And, did you end up doing yeah. stuff in the game and then going back and actually doing it on the car? Or That's what he's saying. Or, you're, or you just didn't have yeah. the money, so you just did it in the game. No, he said he'd do it <laughs> no, in the no. game, and then he'd go do it in the car. He'd, yeah. he'd simulate yeah. it, work it out, and then he'd go lay it on the car. I did the same thing on my my old Audi B5. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, My Mark. Turbo S4. and. uh yeah, I did all of these uh, upgrades in the in the game, and then did them in the car. And, what year and was the Audi? That was a two thousand. So first year of the new S four, right? And now you know the S four has been un, undisturbed since then, right? There have been B five, B six, B seven. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was the very front heavy. But anyway, put a big turbo kit on that hybrid turbos from uh, K O four K sixteen, and and it became a monster but the one thing that's not simulated in the game is that that check engine light like a laser beam just poking <laughs> you in the eye which happened every single day with yeah. that car did so, you fix it with the game does the check engine light come on in check the game? engine light does not come <laughs> on because just what this comes down to is what's fun yeah and the fun part about tuning is feeling that that horsepower kick you in the back of the head for the first time What's not so fun is the uh, the bills I to guess, try and get that check engine light to go. Guess away. there's no emissions in Forza Motorsport. <laughs> Andy, that's right. Has no emissions a, testing. A question about sector times. Andy, yes. Questions about sector times. Um, yes, I was just wondering if sector times for the track as you go are going to be added in the, the new Forza. Well, so as you're actually racing, when you when you cross a sector line, yeah, you get a sector time, and we give you a car ahead, car behind. We give you that kind of data. Are you talking about post race? You talking about in game? Um, post race. Post race, we've really focused on total lap time, and we're doing best lap time. And then we actually have redone our whole dirty versus clean laps for uh, both esports and for rivals. So it's much more reliable and much more understandable. So we're really focusing on competitive racing uh, in this version. When you take a track and you do the sector times, it can't be a predetermined distance because all the tracks are different sizes. So it's got to be a portion of the track. 
applied to each track? Yeah, usually we try and section a track into three sections, but then you move it so it's a bit on a straightaway, so that you're not actually dividing a sector time, you know, right middle of a corner, right? You right. want to have it be logical. When you look at certain tracks, uh, they're historic sector times, but often they're based on different leagues and how they use the track. Mm-hmm. So we kind of make our own sector times based on the type of racing we've got. I got to get on that uh, Sears. Uh, sorry, uh, Sonoma. What do we call in Sonoma now? I don't know. What's Infinian. what's it called? And is it called Infinian? Yeah, it's Infinian. Infinian. We just call it Sonoma, though, right? Well, it was Infinian. Uh, Sears Point. Then it was, Sears, it was Point. Sears Point. Sonoma and then became yeah. Infinian. Oh, you're right. It is Sonoma, isn't it? Sonoma. Yeah, yeah. I'm going back. Okay. Well, so, I, should, I should know that, but uh, no. Yeah. But if you go Laguna Seca in front of the wrong person, they'll go. It's Mazda know. Laguna. Know. Yeah. You know, so everything's got a different name. And I'm just not sure what. Well, what's Sonoma, happening. I think they dropped the names because people started stopped paying for it. So, uh-huh. like Sears Point and, and all that. So, well, so no. now it's just Sonoma. Well, also, I think it's the only track in, in Sonoma, so nobody gets confused. <laughs> Sonoma Raceways is what I'm seeing. That'll yeah. work. Yeah. I think yeah. it's stuck in my head as Infineon, but yeah, it's Sonoma in the game. I will uh, tell you about uh, Alone, man. Back for the fourth season with a crazy new twist. Rules have changed. Ten survivalists are still dropped in the unforgiving wilderness. But now it's five competing teams. Brothers and fathers and sons and a married couple. They all fought. So it's, it's, it's five sets of teams. Ten people. It's a different kind of survival show. Besides the teammate, they're truly alone. It's just them and their teammate. No camera guy standing there eating a s'mores bar, <laughs> sharing the wealth, <laughs> giving you a hit off his uh, smart water. No, man, it's you in the wilderness, and they are filming themselves. So no gimmicks, no forced challenges. Teams are split, equipped with uh, five items each to win. They must find each other and survive North Vancouver Island, the longest. And there's $500,000 at stake, everybody. So tune in for all new episode Thursday, 10 9 on History. It's uh, Thursday, 10 o'clock, 9 central on History, man. All right. Um, I was watching, um, I don't know. You guys tell me. I don't know if I'm, we're always, Matt and I are always a little disappointed, but I was watching. Uh, Speed is the new black or whatever the new show. Uh, yeah. Velocity's all over. I can't remember everyone's name. Anymore. And it, it's always just take this car and breathe on it. Yeah. I, that's what every 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 single one of those shows is really show. Take this car. But they hype it and they hype it and they hype it and they hype it. And then the guys. And, and it's like that kind of thing where it's like, I want to have a track day. It's a 1990 uh, And they're like, well, when we put that chip in it. We put that cone air filter and that exhaust. This thing's going to haul ass. And I'm thinking, 1999-11, track day. You just went from 227 horsepower to 239 yeah. or 240. Yeah. Like, it's I don't louder, know. Though, you're not going to. Yeah, you're going to be hauling ass unless someone has a bone stock um, Fiesta RS or something. <laughs> and then they're going to they're gonna, they're yeah. gonna do laps around you. But I, it wasn't like a bad show, but it's just the same. It's the, it's same, the same show. It's the same. Unfortunately, you can put on that network and you can watch it all day, and you really won't know when one show ends and the other one begins. <laughs> and it's kind of just the same thing. And then it's somewhere <laughs> with about 12 minutes left, the owner has to come in and go, I, am, I want to do a track day, but it's yeah. in two weeks. Two weeks. The brakes aren't even in yet. Yeah. I got two weeks. That's. I don't know if we're going to make it. And it's also like... I don't know what the stakes are. My feeling is, uh, hey, douche, do the track, track day next weekend. And don't do it that, that uh, track day. There's a shit about your track day schedule. Like, just go back the next time you guys yeah. get together and run it then. Yeah. But uh, they, they, I, the episode you're talking about, they ended it and they're like, or they brought him out to a track to like test his car. And then the next episode, they brought the next guy out to, to the track to test the car. And they were, like, all wearing the same clothes. It was, like, clearly all on the same day. Like, I understand you're trying to make production efficient, but uh, at least put a little bit of mystery into it. At least go, go like, uh, you know, change your T-shirt or something to make it look like you didn't do all do this in the yeah, one the, day. The show is, like, it's perfectly competent, but... I don't know. When is gonna, someone going to do the vintage racing show or something? Like uh, Brian, uh, uh, what's his name? ACDC. Uh, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. Like that show's fun because he gets into the old race cars and travels around. 
and, and he talks and, funny and does all that that kind of <laughs> stuff. But um, but I'd, I'd like a show that just found. I've always wanted to do like a vintage race show, like cool vintage yeah. cars, man. You know, there was a cool show that you guys, I think, were involved in a while back, and it was sort of a racing competition show, mm -hmm. and it was, I, I don't, it was Forza something, right? Like, I, yeah. don't, rem I don't remember the name of the show, it's but the, it was a bunch of, like, young drivers competing to be, like, the next yeah. run driver. At least that was cool. That was different, and you got to see people who knew how to drive and some who didn't know how to drive. Hollywood's and, a mystery to me. And, and, so, and compete. Yeah. So you're like, I'm just going to stick to the video I, game I work side in, of it. Uh, I work in digital entertainment, and I work up in the Northwest, and we just have a different kind of the way that uh, deals get made and culturally how creative works. I've, I've gone down to Hollywood. We've talked about linear TV, and I'm just like, I'm, I'm just cut of it. I'm not saying something's better or worse. I, I just speak. A, I'm, I'm from a different place. Well, the way they, it seems to work is they just have these formats. The format is... Get the one guy who's the head of the shop, get the ragtag group of guys who never get along, have the client bring the car in, and have some sort of ticking clock, and then we got to get it done, and then they rebuild the car. And if you love cars, it's, it's interesting, especially if they start with a 911 more so than a notchback Mustang yeah. or something like that. But at a certain point, it'd be nice to, I don't know, get out to Goodwood. See what's going on over there. Like, travel around a little bit. See what other people are doing. Hear about some of the history. Right, you know? right. You know, it's interesting because our focus right now is really on a new generation that thinks about media in a different way. Mm -hmm. They don't really watch TV, right? Cord right. cutters. And so they're watching video games on Twitch and Mixer and yeah. YouTube gaming. And so that that streaming and streaming celebrities is a completely different format and that's where the rise of esports has happened and so the forza racing championship going to le mans that's related to this whole rise of esports and and streaming and and the format of those shows are very different but it's also a different audience they're so much younger and they grew up playing games i mean thumbsticks in their hand and a controller is like as natural as anything else did the uh when they do the le mans race are uh, is everyone doing it in real time yes yeah, so we're basically doing a tournament over the course of the 24 hours so we've got multiple drivers that are going to be racing against each other in multiple formats and and different races and that's uh, different tracks and that's the cool thing about oh, digital not, racing so so they're on le mans as well right so what i what i'm thinking the uh the the logical progression mm. is the race starts at i think 3:30 now i don't know why yeah, was, we, 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 we saw last somebody week, three. started at 4 for 80 years and, then and it was somebody three, went like yeah, let's make it 3:30 Joey Ham was on the show is like i don't know. I, know i don't know what time the race starts and i'm in it get to track by 2 that's what <laughs> that's i said play it safe you yeah. don't have to be suited up no. but just get to the track so give it a little buffer what 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 i'm envisioning is when the race starts, the simulated race starts, and they go 24 hours. Like, multiple players, three three or four players per team, jumping in and out of the seat. Hell, harness, get the six-way harness on. <laughs> and now, again, everyone's driving on the same track. Everyone's, you know, seeing each other. And the virtual winner goes with the real winner up on the podium. So we've done that in the past. We actually had 24-hour races going on with, uh, we did it with Audi at, uh, in a New York shop. We've done it in different places over the years. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, I think we're doing something at the Peterson this coming weekend in Celebration Le Mans that's much more like traditional motorsport. But the exciting part about e Will you go 24? Yeah. yeah. Wow. You but can the go to the Peterson and race Le Mans for overnight. <laughs> but the exciting thing about uh, eSports... sleep in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The exciting thing about eSports is actually getting away from some, some of the traditional tropes in motorsport and inventing something that brings a new audience in. Right. So we're really focusing how, how do we get a new audience to care about cars the way we do, but it means rethinking some of the old ideas that uh, we're all comfortable with from having watched Steve McQueen and Lamont and grown up loving these things. We need to, to let those things breathe a little bit so we can get the new audience in and give them new experiences that feel natural to them. So uh, we still think it's for kids, but it's not for kids. Like, it's what's, really what's not. the average age of the you have 14 million people that play your game? 
registered users. Mm-hmm. At what we were talking, something like four million a month are pretty much active. Yeah, four point right? eight million a month are active, and yeah, fourteen million have played on the Xbox alone. So Xbox One alone. So it's yeah. not including like PC or Xbox three hundred and sixty. Yeah, it's a huge racing. It's a massive racing community, and that's what's different. We're democratizing racing. There's there's no other place in the world where you can get four point eight million people in a month racing. What other racing. league? You know, yeah. well, SCCA doing is anything. It's obviously <laughs> the price of entry is <laughs> far too high. No. No, I mean, we. I'm doing another documentary on it, and these guys are basically explaining, you know, it, it, you're not a racer, you're a salesman back then, back in Willie T. Ribs' day. But even now, it's like, we, we need you to go find us money, not drive a car fast. There's a handful of guys that yeah. drive the car fast, and the rest of the guys, they got to go raise money. They, yeah, they a lot of the racers now, like our friends in drag racing, they're like, you, if you bring us the money, we'll put you in a car. Yeah, and it's, it's, I was it's like well, it's, that doesn't seem like it's a fair. business. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I'm hey, a driver. Hey, some money. Yeah. We'll let you fly the yeah. plane. Yeah. <laughs> like really? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Southwest. Yeah. I got a nice buzz going. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> it's gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> Is that We're the real Eiffel Tower in Vegas? What the hell's going on? <laughs> <laughs> We're way off course. Yeah, way off. <laughs> so the. I like this because, yeah, it wouldn't be formerly Willie T. Ribs, not a lot of African-American guys driving in race cars, not a lot of inner city types and stuff like that because they couldn't afford you know, They've got to play soccer, basketball. They can't do motorsports. Now now you can. Mm-hmm. But I'm also hoping that it's kind of opening the general uh, consciousness of these people to go check out the real Lamar. Yeah. You know, and, and be involved and, and look back at some of the history and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, but are, are are the players all 16 or are they all 32? In our esports series in particular, they're particularly Hold young. On. Or 48. I'm just going along <laughs> with this math. Yeah. <laughs> As we yeah. get deeper in, I, I think things are going to really change. So we're inventing a new form of motorsport, but it's going to take years of listening to our community, running competitions, changing format. But in the electronic space, we can move things so quickly. I mean, we can just change and we can travel the world in 20 minutes and we can change the formats and the rules and the cars so quickly. We can develop something more entertaining very quickly. So this is the process of invention. Right now, our most skilled players are playing with controller, and they're younger. They're younger guys. But as we get deeper in, this is going to be a a logical place where a race car driver who's hit some asymptote, some limit in their career, can actually get into the esports racing place because their skill set on a wheel completely translates to yeah. a simulator. So the fastest drivers, when the, when, our, when the pro drivers, you know, Tony Kanaan, Joseph Newgarden. Kanaan says guys, he might have to retire soon. When and he, these guys come to our <laughs> studio and they get on our simulator, our, our guys at, at work can't beat them. They're so fast. They're so consistent. So that skill set translates over. As this eSport grows, we're going to be getting pro drivers. We're going to get older drivers. And right now we're getting this, this influx of new younger drivers, which is great. The whole game, though, has a really diverse group. Yeah. We've got young kids playing split screen. We've got older drivers that are really comfortable with motorsport as it is today. And then we have more women. We have an even split between Europe and North America. I mean, it's just um, racing speaks to a much broader group of people than some of the shooter games, some of the mature rated games. Yeah. Well, I like that you support the history of, of cars in there as well. The motorsport history. You've got cars of all years. Mm-hmm. And and that's that's a cool part of it because it plays to what you're talking about adam is is how race cars are becoming more valuable and becoming more prominent and showing up at auctions and doing the bring your trailer thing and they're getting a lot of attention but you can play these cars in the game i uh, not everything has to be a brand new porsche it's a great time to be alive it's a great time to check out geico see what i did there yeah how about uh you uh save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance just go to geico.com spend about 15 minutes Browse around there. Could be saving 15% or more on your auto insurance. Why wouldn't you do that? Put a little extra money in your pocket. Maybe pick up a little Forza 7 over there. How about it? Go to Geico.com. Spend just a couple of minutes. See just how much you could be saving with our good friends over at Geico.com. So it's Forza Motorsports 7. You can pre-order it now. And uh, you can go through Amazon, bookmark us, and do all that. It's coming out uh, the 28th of September. Actually, it's October 3rd. October 3rd. Wow, I just got kicked back. Yeah. <laughs> October 3rd. <laughs> like I right. said, on the fly. Anything can change. Anything, anything can change. Anything can change. Yeah, it's, when, such, when, it's so fluid. They're so fluid, they don't even know when they're coming the, out. The game comes out October. When's the 
the new Xbox come out? November 7th. So actually, if you buy the game on October 3rd, you'll automatically get an update when the new console comes out for free. Okay. And you can just get 4K glory, and the, the game looks amazing, whether you have a 1080p or 4K TV on that new Xbox One X. Well, yeah. onward and upward. Uh, you can go to uh, com for all the information on uh, live shows and where we're going to be at and all that. Check out yeah. Shift and Steer. <clears throat> We've got the live podcast coming up today. June 16th. Oh, today, yeah. That's uh, SoCal Speed yeah. Shop in Pomona. Listen to Come this and head on out. Head on out, man. And, uh, by the way, quick shout out, uh, Vic Edelbrock. Our friend mm-hmm. Vic brought us out on the yacht. Good guy, friend of ours. Uh, passed away, uh, and he will be missed. He and he's will a legend be. in this space, and we've always enjoyed a cocktail or two with Vic. Yeah. And uh, that was a big blow to the industry because his, yeah, his it's entire good family is yeah. huge in the Great industry. Great family. Yeah. Great guy. He'll be missed. Okay. Uh, also, uh, you can go to chassis, C-H-A-S-S-Y dot com for our movies and mugs and all that kind of stuff. Until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Dan Greenewald and Matt the Moderator, D'Andrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. The Corolla Drink Seattle Bar Crawl is sold out. But don't worry, you can still party with us at the Showbox Soto Lounge. Saturday, June 24th, Lynette Corolla, Ray Oldhofer, Jay Miller, Gary, Kalen, Dylan, Nick, Dawson, plus Loxy. And I'll pick up all your pieces, but I can't help you go. Loxy at the Showbox Soto Lounge, plus special guest, Moon Darling. Tickets and more information at CorollaDrinks.com. Get your tickets now for Loxy and Moon Darling at the world-famous Showbox Soto Lounge, Saturday, June 24th at CorollaDrinks.com.